Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for thanks for joining us for our live CPD webinar on uh, seamless resin flooring. Uh, thank you for those joining us in the UK and uh, those joining us from overseas today. Much appreciated. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box on the right hand side. We will be answering these questions at the end of the presentation. Today, we are going to present to you our REBA approved CPD on seamless resin flooring. I'm David Hockley, Area Technical Manager for Flooring, and I'm joined today by my other team members, David Saunders, Mohammed Ashfak, and David Bullock. Today's agenda will be covering these topics, um, a short company introduction to Seeker, an overview of seamless flooring, the main types, their characteristics, and the categories of resin flooring materials, the relevant standards, design considerations, and other considerations when specifying seamless resin flooring. And for those who are interested in innovation, a look at the more modern advanced systems and technologies of resin flooring technology. We hope to achieve these objectives your improved understanding of the characteristics, including pros and cons of the main resin flooring types, improved understanding of key considerations for specifying seamless resin flooring, your enhanced awareness of the relevant standards, future reference, and an enhanced knowledge of advanced systems and technologies of resin flooring materials. So about Seeker. Seeker is a speciality chemicals company with a leading position in, in the development and production of systems and products for the building sector and motor vehicle industry. Globally, Seeker has subsidiaries in 100 countries around the world and manufactures in over 300 factories. Seeker now employs more than 25,000 people and a generated result of 8.1 billion Swiss francs. Here in the UK, uh, Seeker, uh, we have the Seeker UK and including Ireland, which was established in 1927. And we have four manufacturing sites, our main one being in Welland Garden City, uh, also in Preston, Leeds and Dublin. Collectively in the UK, we employ more than 990 employees and we have a turnover greater than 300 million. We are also Seeker's Global Research and Development Technology Centre for the specialization of PU technology and innovation based at Preston. At Seeker, we structure our business according to our target markets, which are concrete, waterproofing, refurbishment and building finishing, roofing, sealing and bonding, industry, and our subject today, floorings and coatings. At Seeker, we work across a whole construction sectors from residential and commercial to infrastructure projects. And that can be either new construction or renovation. With our target markets combined, we offer a unique value, value proposition for clients and designers from basement to roof. For Seeker Flooring, uh, Seeker offers um, services to support specification um, by providing on site um, visits, detailed assessments of projects and performance criteria, together with product proposals and specification clauses. We also have, um, as well as having comprehensive systems, we also have a quality assurance scheme by partnering ourselves with specialist contractors who are under constant review of installation of Seeker products through our Seeker Strata and Seeker Park Deck Contractor Scheme. We also provide complete material data, installation guides, health and safety information, and where appropriate, maintenance schedules, pre-contract and post-contract use. Seeker also offers continuous product training for to support clients, consultants, and contractor representatives through our Contractor Scheme Strata
Zika is the largest manufacturer of high performance resinous floor products in the world. Seeker's flooring systems have been developed for a wide range of markets, including transportation, manufacturing, healthcare, education, retail, and commercial type projects. Seeker's flooring range has a perfect balance between functionality and aesthetics, with, with all coverings manufactured for longevity and to create an attractive decorative solution. What is seamless resin flooring? Board seamless flooring systems are generally epoxy based, polyurethane, or methylmethacrylate based, also known as MMA. They contain multiple components and are mixed on site before being applied to a substrate in a stage process. Once the flooring is cured, the board system forms a monolithic surface with no joints and no areas for dirt, dust, and bacteria to accumulate. This helps keep the floor hygienic with minimal maintenance. Seamless flooring can easily be customized to offer the functionality to different spaces. This includes protection against extreme temperatures, stains, abrasion, UV damage. Seamless floors also allow for controllable texture in areas where slit resistance is essential. Seamless resin flooring materials can provide commercial and industrial spaces with greater durability. As well as a life cycle cost savings, epoxy polyurethane and methylmethacrylate are three of the most common seamless resin materials. Epoxy resin, which are suitable for internal applications, helps to create durable, chemical resistant, hygienic, and easy to maintain surfaces. It is a very popular choice in factories and warehouses. Epoxies offer a wide range of color options and decorative effects, making epoxy-based systems traditionally the most popular form of resin flooring. Epoxy resin flooring has proven to have a lifespan of 10 to 20 years and can be, can be even longer with proper maintenance. Polyurethanes. Polyurethanes tend to dominate the thicker, more robust end of the resin flooring spectrum. Depending on the system, polyurethanes can be installed as a flow applied, self smoothing, or trial applied mortar. The true benefit of a polyurethane finish lies in its exceptional robust nature. Polyurethane resin flooring provides a floor of excellent resistance to impact, abrasion, and most chemicals. It can often be seen in an industrial sector within factories, warehouses, and production plants. Unlike epoxies, Polyurethanes are, are great at resisting rapid and extreme changes in temperature, as well as seasonal thermal cycling without cracking. Depending on the technology, polyurethane resins can be installed in both internal and external applications. And the final technology, MMA, which is a methylmethacrylate resin system, it's developed to enable fast track applications, typically 60 minutes to receive a full trafficking. This system, sorry, this, these systems are suitable for both internal and external applications. MMA systems exhibit incredible bond strength and high compressive strengths, as well as resistance to a wide range of temperature. Due to this wide temperature range and the fast curing ability, these are often the choice for fast insulation projects such as commercial kitchens or external car parks and walkways. So which resin would I choose? Different resin types give different combinations of application characteristics and in service performance. This is outlined in British standard PS 8204-6 that classifies the, the types as in shown in, the, shown in this table. It's important to understand the definition um, of the type of, type of duty to match it with the environment you're trying to specify it for. Light duty is interpreted as light foot traffic, use, occasional rubber tired vehicles. Medium duty, is classified as regular foot traffic, frequent forklift traffic, 
and occasional hard plastic wheel trolleys. Heavy duty is interpreted as constant forklift truck traffic, hard plastic wheel trolleys and some impact. And finally, very heavy duty is where you've got environments where you have severe heavy loaded traffic and impact. So moving on to the relevant standards for seamless flooring. There are, there are many of them, and we're going to highlight a few of these today. Notably, um, for suitable connection to um, common um, construction materials, is to note uh, the BS 8204-3, which relates to polymodified cementitious leveling screws and wearing screws. This gives recommendations for the design and installation of trowel finished polymodified cementitious screeds, which are suitable for resin flooring materials. These have a proportion of polymer solids based on a mass of dry cement that is at least 4%. As bonded screeds applied to direct finishes, concrete slabs, fine, uh, sorry, fine concrete screeds, and to existing concrete floors. Another noteworthy uh, Standard is British Standard 7976, which relates to pendulum tests, which is a method of operation. It details a number of test methods for assessing uh, the slip resistance of floors, which is uh, very, very important as uh, claims for slips, trips, and falls in the workplace uh, is, is a third of all claims, according to uh, UK insurance data. It is also important to uh, choose the right products uh, with, with backed up by uh, quality management and also sustainable products. Uh, this relates to the ISO 9001 standard uh, for quality management system requirements, which relates to the manufacturing of quality products. Also in relation to sustainability, um, ISO 14001, which relates to environmental management systems uh, requirements for guidance for use. Concrete is a very common um, material in the UK and, and globally, and um, often you will find is uh, the connecting material for uh, resin flooring. Uh, resin flooring is designed to adhere very strongly to concrete and in most cases within industrial and commercial settings this is the common substrate it is important to determine for inspection its condition a durable bond must be achieved between the new flooring system and the substrate the minimum compressive strength needed uh, for a concrete substrate should be no less than 25 newtons millimeter squared or 25 mpa a high strength may be required dependent on the defined load, but typically 25 newtons millimeter squared is the same. Also, the bond is important, and this is measured by cohesive strength, and the cohesive strength of the concrete should be a minimum of 1.5 newtons millimeter squared, 1.5 MPA. This is required to withstand stresses from the concrete shrinkage, thermal shock, or loadings. The cohesive strength can be measured by a number of pull-off tests across the floor. Moisture is also important, especially in today's uh, concrete mix designs, and cement-bound substrates should normally only ever be overcoated at moisture level that is below 4% part by weight. There are also some relevant associations. Um, you should take note of to provide some good guidance. The Resin Flooring Association for the UK is, is FERFA. FERFA members have a wealth of industry knowledge and experience and actively influence how flooring standards are devised and how the industry is regulated. They also produce industry guidance relevant to specification, installation, and the cleaning and maintenance of resin flooring systems. Also, clean rooms. Uh, this is utilised in many industries such as pharmaceutical, life sciences and manufacturing industries as airborne particles have been proven to be a major source of contamination. 
Obviously, there is a global drive to bring down carbon footprint, and uh, that exists in construction as well. In the UK, uh, BREAM is, is a recognised scheme, which, was a, which is an assessment scheme that was formed in 1990 by the BRE, the Building Research Establishment, which assesses the overall performance of buildings using factors such as energies, sorry, such as energy and water use. Um, also, this lends itself to the internal environment uh, in relation to health and well-being. Uh, BREAM considers resin flooring products to fall under the scope of resilient floor coverings. I will now hand you over to my colleague, David Saunders. Thank you very much, David. Good morning, everybody. My name is David Saunders, and it gives me great pleasure to discuss with you today some of the important design considerations and how seamless resin flooring can help you overcome some of the many challenges that you may be presented with upon each and every scheme. At the start of any scheme, you'll typically be given a brief by your client or the environment you're designing. And in order to specify the most suitable flooring will depend on a number of different factors, including the building's intended use, levels of traffic, Will the floor be subjected to any heavy loads or point loading, any climatic conditions, and right through to working hours available for installation, and very importantly, clients' preferred cleaning and maintenance regime? What type of aesthetics are you hoping to achieve? This may include one or a number of different colours, plain or a textured finish, logos or patterns, some form of wayfinding or signage, or maybe you wish to create some form of biophilic design to help with health and well-being. Resin flooring has become an extremely popular choice as they offer fantastic design options. They're completely seamless with no joints, which means not only do they look more visually pleasing on the eye, but you also eliminate one of the biggest failure points within flooring. You're not restricted by roll widths, tile or plank sizes. There is an unrivaled amount of both standard and bespoke colours available, and it offers incredible flexibility, so much so that you can simply change colour, change texture, or even slip resistance as and when the building evolves or areas have a change of use. Another very important consideration is making sure that the chosen floor is fit for purpose. Is it both tough enough and durable enough for the environment it's going into? What type of life expectancy is required? Resin floors are extremely tough and durable, resulting in a life expectancy of in excess of 20 years. They're dimensionally stable, which means they do not shrink or expand. And as mentioned previously, there's no joints, therefore no weldings required, and they're completely seamless, which makes them highly practical for virtually all types of industrial, commercial, and residential applications. Especially when you take into consideration, there are no safety issues where joints can open up and adhesive bonds can be compromised, such as with resilient sheet flooring, for example, which can typically start to bubble, or tiles which start to shrink or expand, and you end up with potential lips and trip hazards all over, which the end user, at great inconvenience, ends up having to put a slit in the bubbles to try and remove the excess air, then put tape on to try and make flat, tone off, and sometimes even close parts of the building off until expensive remedial works are carried out. A seamless surface means it's extremely hygienic, it's easy to clean, and it's great for areas where, for example, there may be spillages or dirt walked in from the outside. It could be one of the requirements is, does the floor perform when subjected to different levels of chemical spillages? And whilst many floor types will fail very quickly, for example, when highly acidic or heavily concentrated chemicals come into contact with them, due to resin's extremely dense surface, there are systems available which can withstand the most challenging types of chemical exposure. It could be that you have sensitive equipment in a particular area, and that you need some kind of static control within the floor, typically in hospital theatres or where electronic parts are assembled. Resin floors offers excellent static performance for all different levels, such as anti-static, ESD, or conductive areas. And also being seamless and with no joints in these type of environments offers the client real peace of mind. As with some other flooring types that have joints or require welding, it's normally the weak point which will open up over time causing a breakdown in the conductive system, 
significantly impairing strategic performance and which can cause the client major disruption and financial implications. And with regards to moisture, it could be that your project is outside, such as an open deck car park, so it's exposed to all the elements. Or maybe it's a fast track application. Again, there are resin systems available, for all types of scenarios, and ones that can cure in a matter of hours rather than days to help meet program requirements. It could be you have a highly hygienic environment, such as an acute ward within hospital, where cleaning and disinfecting is constant, and you may wish to eliminate joints, as you would typically have with resilient flooring, for example. This means there are no areas for dirt, and crucially where bacteria and germs can breed. Resin flooring can easily be maintained with all different types of cleaning systems available, such as traditional mop and bucket, a single disc machine, or a scrubber dryer, or simply requiring water and neutral detergent, or for specific systems, by method of steam cleaning. Lots of cleaning professionals actually prefer cleaning resin flooring, as due to the seamless surface, they can happily apply water and cleaning products without the worry of a joint opening, where water may get in, break down the adhesive, and cause the flooring to prematurely fail. Resin flooring offers superior durability, reliability, and due to not having to continually repair or refurb, offers significant life cycle cost savings. In fact, you'll hear later in the presentation by one of my colleagues about one of the very exciting new resin technologies that can actually be regenerated over its lifetime, offering a life expectancy of an excess of 40 years, resulting in incredible life cycle performance. Sustainability falls into everything, and flooring is certainly no exception. Resin flooring achieves very high sustainability contributions and BRIAM credits. And with resin flooring, during installation, there is virtually no wastage of materials. While most other flooring types will typically have between 10 and 25% wastage on every single scheme. And when we think about sustainability, this very important factor can often be overlooked. One where a specifier can find out more about the company, its products, and its environmental impact is by requesting an EPD, which is an environmental product declaration. It's based on international standards, it's independently verified, and it looks at things like the impact of raw material procurement, plus emissions to soil, water and air, for example. It also allows for direct comparisons to be made with an alternative solution within the same product category. And quite uniquely, Seeker are able to produce and send out environmental packs for some of the commercial systems on a project by project basis, which BRIAM assessors have found to be excellent, extremely helpful, and saving them many hours of valuable time. And with regards to health and wellbeing, resin flooring with its extremely low VOCs has a positive effect on indoor air quality and breathability. Excellent slip resistance can be achieved to help keep people safe. And now with some new revolutionary advancements, there are resin systems that can offer exceptional footfall acoustic improvements of up to 19 dB. More peaceful and calming environment, significant improvement to ergonomics, and with anti-fatigue properties help to reduce joint and back issues, for example, within a hospital. With virtually unlimited design options, biophilic designs can easily be incorporated, which is shown to help greatly help mental well-being. There may be some areas where you need a certain class of fire resistance, for example, where your floor is below ground or in a tunnel. In these type of areas, you need at least a B-class fire resistant material, such as resin flooring achieves, which in an unfortunate event of a fire, helps mitigate the amount of smoke produced, which allows people to suitably escape. Seamless resin flooring has exceptional resistance to heat, does not burn easily, and very importantly, in the event of a fire, does not emit harmful gases, such as halogens or chlorines, for example, which can cause severe and often fatal respiratory problems. And finally, slip resistance is a really important design consideration. And as my colleague David mentioned earlier, with one out of every three accidents in the workplace due to trips and slips, the average case documented by Viva Insurance is around about £14,000 per claim. Of course, there's things that we can do during the design stage, such as making sure we've got adequate entrance matting, plus it's of good enough quality to help remove some of the dirt and moisture being walked in from the outside. However, it's critical 
that effective slip testing is carried out to determine if the floor is suitable for any given environment and very importantly to help prevent future accidents. There's two main types of tests. One's mainly done in Europe, which is a ramp test. However, it should be noted that this is carried out in a lab environment and in perfect conditions. All flooring then achieves an R rating, typically from R9 to R13. For example, R9 would offer you a high risk slip potential in the wet, and from R11 to R13 would offer you a low risk slip potential in the wet. However, in the UK, and recommended by the HSE, is a pendulum test, which is portable, so it's actually carried out on site in real conditions if required. It's based on different sliders. One is for short pedestrians, and the other is for barefoot. It's very important to use the correct sliders and you end up getting a PTV reading for both wet and dry based on a coefficient of friction. And as you can see on the screen there, you get typical readings. For example, PTV 0 to 24, you have a slip risk of 1 in 20, and that's a very high slip risk potential. PTV reading of 25 to 35, you have a slip risk of 1 in 100,000. It's a moderate risk slip potential. And finally, we have a PTV a 36 plus, you actually have a slip risk of one in one million. It's a low risk slip potential. And therefore in the UK, the PTV of 36 is deemed to be the minimum PTV requirement for both wet and dry conditions as it offers the lowest slip potential. Resin flooring can easily be adapted to achieve and exceed this, offering exceptional slip resistance for all scenarios, including wet rooms. Thank you very much for your time. I'm now going to pass you over to my colleague, Mo. Thanks, uh, David, for that. My name is Mohamed Ashak, uh, Area Technical Manager for Flooring and Car Parks in the North. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the other considerations as you move into the sort of uh, construction phases of the uh, uh, systems and applications. Even at design stage, you should consider the sort of surface um, roughness and flatness that you may need. Um, if you have a textured surface, uh, it obviously needs um, to be sufficient falls in that to allow any discharge of water. And the British standard for that is 8204-1. Um, you traditionally look at one in 80, the falls, the free draining floors, or one in 60, uh, but of course, you have to be very careful uh, if it's like a car park or a non-slip aggregated finish, you may need slightly a greater fall. Of course, that then uh, detracts from the self-leveling, smoothing type systems or the uh, pump screeds that we have and that you would apply, then you would have to consider the sort of application. So it's quite important, even during design stage and the buildability uh, stage, that how this will be all achieved. And one of the other key factors is the flatness. There are SR ratings, and uh, the highest standard for special floors is over a two meter straight edge, is only three millimeter deviation. And trying to achieve that for a contractor on site takes a lot of skill and planning. Uh, and you can go up to 10 millimeters in terms of the sort of applications. Um, where the regularity of the surface isn't that important, somewhere as you may be, or just uh, storage areas. In terms of joints, my colleagues quite clearly uh, mentioned, if they can be avoided, especially in food, uh, hygiene, hospitals and that, great. Uh, the less you can put in, the less bacteria and problems you may get from those sort of things. Um, the spacing and where the joints are needed, more particularly in car parks, for instance, structural engineers should be involved with ourselves in considering where those should be, what um, number and type. Um, we have the seamless seeker prefabricated carbon reinforced system for floors and for high bay racking forklift drivers. Any arises that get broken, uh, not only damaging the machinery equipment, but can lead to problems for the operatives. The Seeker Flex sealant that goes in there and the joint is quite unique in that it can have plus or minus 30 uh, millimeter movement capabilities. So for older floors, um, yes, it's possible 
to actually cast in the uh, profiles, bond them down, and then put the sealants in. And finally, given that it's a seamless area that we want, you can either leave it exposed or put a resin application over the top of those. The other areas to consider is the water floor junctions. And of course, if you're looking at seamless hygienic floors and, and things like um, that detail is quite important. You can form these through an epoxy and polyurethane coating mortars. And in some areas, for instance, a big warehouse or a car park, you could have a multitude of details almost coming in conjunction with one another. In this case, you can see a movement joint, um, sort of rectangular column, a circular little um, uh, curb detail. So detailing is quite fundamental in, in uh, achieving a seamless floor. On the wall sides, we have waterborne acrylic uh, hygienic wall coatings being ran for 30 odd years, using many, many applications and through our hospitals and through uh, production areas. Um, these are hard wearing and seamless. We can reinforce them in glass fiber uh, for high impact uh, areas and if trolleys are used, they're quite easily repairable and many colors are available or patterns. As you can see in this theater on the soffit of the ceiling, uh, basically uh, we can engineer any color and design with yourselves, uh, should that be um, necessary. In terms of the drainage I mentioned earlier there with the falls, uh, most critical at design stage, and of course how it is going to be installed on site, is what type and spacing of these drains uh, and of course goes without saying please don't put it under the processing equipment because you want to get to it and clean it stainless steel generally um, one complete unit is the best way um, you know channels and if you've got a, a, a joint at the edge with the um, screening material it's best to put some sort of a flexible sealant and seal that if it's very heavy industrial areas and forklifts or something else may go over as well as the normal fruit processing or other things, then the resin system can be taken underneath the actual um, channels. So you get, a, a, if there were a problem with the actual channel or something, there is a watertight seal. And we partner with uh, ACO, um, a large global company. Um, looking at design detailing and considerations at the early stages and then we continue to offer that sort of support and installation things onto the site uh, especially applicators that we have in terms of uh, system technologies these are nothing new in, in it they've, they've been around for a while uh, with seekers um, this is the comfort floor resin that was applied at war 10 a children's hospital of a uh, claim to fame with that one uh, my daughter actually is a nurse in that ward uh, unknown to me until it all turned up she said dad you're going to use seeker in our place which was quite quite nice and uh, you put all sorts of patterns in it and uh, colors that you want as you will see in a moment so the comfort floor is one uh, technology the polyurethane hybrid screeds have been around a long time but we've um, slightly engineered them to give even more higher performance and applications as you will see in a moment and then the hybrid fast curing leveling compounds these are not your uh, anhydride screeds these are really industrial problem solving leveling components that seeker have if we look at the first one of these the comfort full range basically it's liquid vinyl and it is seamless so there is no chance of bacteria and things like that joints opening up edges lifting up uh, you know for comfort and that there's a wide color range as you can see in this school a wide open area and uh, the client wanted different colors almost um, designed to match in with the furniture and applications you know the resilience and flexibility it's impact resistance we can actually put uh, resilient matting underneath on either the ground floors or suspended floors and we have data that's measured to noise reductions right up to 19 decibels. Uh, it's very easily cleanable. And there's a fire resistance uh, values to that, UV resistance with the seal coat that goes on. And it has the BRE A plus rating on the BREAM um, settings. 
The life cycle assessment my colleague mentioned earlier, uh, basically, is should the client decide 10 years, 20 years later, I want to refresh this area and uh, put a different pattern of colour, not a problem. You abrade that surface, we will give guidelines, of course, and reapply the resin on top, and then the new pattern colours and the seal coat. So the total cost of the uh, whole life costing of this, uh, wastage, uh, sustainability and various other things is quite unique and high. In terms of this application, I, I touched upon the uh, hospital there. Uh, public buildings, we've done a few of those uh, and it's quite easily and um, more pleasing to the eye. Commercial buildings, you know, um, little children's nurseries uh, and wards, we've done various areas. Residential buildings, um, you know, seamless resin flooring instead of vinyl uh, type of thing. And as you saw earlier, you know, you can have it white or you can have any colours you want uh, and you can create any pattern you want. You dream it, we can achieve it with you. In terms of the um, hybrid screeds, um, some may or may not be familiar, you know, it has the excellent um, mechanical, chemical sort of properties, high resistance uh, to temperature because when they want uh, food processing areas, you may want to clean it at 60 to 80 degrees steam cleaning. So it should be, um, you know, uh, resistant to that. Installations, you know, quite unique, large to small areas. One of the greatest things Seeker have uh, in terms of these, normally they're a matte finish with a bit of aggregate uh, showing. We have the high gloss finish system as well. It almost looks like an epoxy resin, but please don't worry. The slip resistance is taken care of <laughs> with the right appropriate uh, profiling and detailing. And of course, the cleanability of this being such a smoother surface, uh, clients actually really, really like that. We've done various uh, breweries, you know, weather spoons, basements, uh, food packaging areas, uh, various uh, kitchens, cold storage storerooms, and the heavy duty impact areas that you may have where there's a, a lot of you know forklifts and, and storage areas. So the polyurethane temperature just hybrid screens are, are the way forward. You can have them at two and a half mil, six mil and nine mil systems. The hybrid fast curing technology that I spoke about there and introducing it to you is basically combining the gypsum uh, technologies that we have as well uh, and the cementitious leveling compounds and combining this to give the new unique hybrid version of materials that we can take um, you know any form of floors do the preparation you can actually either hand lay these systems or pump them out and finally they're coated and sometimes in some areas certain systems that we have just want them to be polished floored and the sealer coat on it In terms of the actual hybrid technology, you know, uh, you can go up to five to 50 millimeters. It's pumpable to that. This uh, thickness is quite easily. You can lay this, you know, a, and then be on top of the uh, finishing resin and so, uh, surfacing or tiling or vinyl or whatever you want within six to 48 hours. It just depends what the thickness is and which system we tend to use. They're virtually uh, low shrinkage and designed. Um, with with the uh, architects and engineers. This will be something that uh, is a presentation on its own, and so I'm only going to briefly tell you about this uh, in terms of give us the worst oil contaminated cracked floors, old tiling, vinyl. We will give you a new floor system that is fully reinforced, high impact, robust, and seamless. So I'll leave it at that because there's a new presentation that we'll be doing on the 18th that my colleague introduced later. I'd like now to hand over to my uh, other colleague, uh, David Bullock, who will take you towards the end uh, of this um, seminar with questions at, at the end. Thank you, Mo. Uh, my name is David Bullock, and I look after the cement issues, dry shakes, and curing agents for the whole of the UK. Um, I will be talking uh, about case studies of our products. 
So the case study, a superior surface solution was supplied as part of a major overall of the home of rugby, Twickenham experience. The official provider of match day hospitality and conference facility at the famous stadium has been working to create a number of event spaces following an overall of its east stand area. New flooring was needed, required the manufacturer to work closely with the architect and client to establish resin as an improved, sustainable and durable surface alternative to vinyl. The flooring also has to meet the client's aesthetic inspirations for the development final finish. A tough elasticated polyurethane self smoothing floor system was agreed as the ideal solution. Preparation work involved in an assortment of captive shot blasting to the concrete as well as vacuum controlled diamond grinding to screed areas. The total of 3000 square meters of leveling screed was then applied to ensure a quality finish. This process also added the protection development time with quick curing allowing for foot traffic after just hours. A system which is proven to perform well under harsh conditions was then installed whilst concrete repairs were carried out to four levels of the stadium. The system increased hygienic functionality as well as its ease to clean properties, makes it the ideal flooring for heavy traffic public places where health and safety and appearance are crucial. Endless colours and designs options are available, superior acoustic floor to wall connections and a soft walking and standing surface. We have a full range of case studies available for download from our website across a range of sectors and applications which will include following this webinar. We have come to the end of today's seminar. We hope that you have gained confidence in selecting and specifying seamless resin flooring with a deeper understanding of the main resin flooring types, including pros and cons. Familiarity with key consideration factors related to uh, aesthetics and structural design when specifying resin flooring. Enhanced knowledge of in advanced systems and technologies for high specification requirements. Thank you. And just at the end, we have a free technical service for all your inquiries and brochures for the world with Seeker. I'm now going to pass you over to Charlotte Hilton for any questions. Thanks, David. Morning, everyone. Um, I'll be managing our Q&A section of the webinar this morning. Um, I can see that we've already got a few questions that have come in through the Q&A, um, so I'll get us started. Um, first one being, what support do you provide with joint sailing? Who shall I hand that one over to, Mohammed? Sorry, Charlie, what was that? Support we provide what? What support do you provide with joint sailing? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, whilst doing the design uh, and detailing of the floors and specification state, if there are joints to be installed, depending on the type and um, um, sort of movement we may expect, We'll give you full guidance and detailing on the joints, uh, the formation, like you saw the um, Seeker P profile joint system, right through to Seeker Flex technology that we have for different applications, different colours that you may want, and all the details that will come with those. Great, thank you. And um, just another one as well that we've got. What issues do you expect with old and new floors if they are damp? Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, um, old floors do propose a challenge, but during our site visits um, and helping the clients, we tend to carry out an assessment with them in determining if the DPM is missing or they know for a fact that they're going to have damp issues or have had damp issues. 
and then we will consider uh, technologies from an epoxy impregnation, double coating, right through to our FSM technology, which is epoxy modified cement, goes down a couple of millimeters, fully suppresses any of that dam coming through, and then you can put vinyls or resin flooring. It's guaranteed osmosis free, that particular technology, quite unique to seed cast. So yeah, it's a clear assessment um, in terms of older floors that uh, one of the things to consider is, you know, the moisture that may be in there or DPMs missing. Great, thanks Mohammed. We've actually got a few more as well that have um, come through. Um, next one being, can you can your resin floors, can your resins and leveling compounds go with under floor heating systems? Uh, I, I'll take that one, yes. Um, Great, yeah, we, we, uh, we have a few technologies uh, that we have. Um, so we have standard uh, cementitious uh, leveling mortars that can be used with with underfloor heating systems, which are really suitable for uh, for cementitious or concrete substrates. But we also now have a, a hybrid, which is a hybrid of uh, cement and calcium sulfate, which means it can go over um, even timber materials now, and you're able to connect. Um, you're able to connect resin floorings to those. So yes, we, we have, have those technologies. Well, thanks, David. Um, another question, when do you reinforce and when do you not reinforce using hygienic wall coatings? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question um, because uh, the, obviously you, the, the systems use this similar system components. So, um, it, it really is the determination is the environment that it's, it's being used in. So it's about durability, but it's also about the cleaning regime. Um, we we do have um, a product selector on our website, which gives you a breakdown of recommendations for different environments. But I would say uh, the cleaning regime, um, if you've got things like it's, an area needs to be wet scrubbed or VHP sterilization, which is common in pharmaceutical environments, then a reinforced system uh, would be would be needed. Great. Just a couple more as well that have come in. Um, how do you co resin floors? Yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, really good question, especially with vertical joints being one of the biggest failures on resilient sheet flooring. How often have you seen welds fail on vertical mitres, either during the initial installation or during application? When, for example, maybe beds in a hospital, unfortunately, it's in the wall, hopefully, without the patient being on there, or simply with cleaning and maintenance through machinery. The main reason being is when you actually apply a PVC weld rod to a joint, you actually melt it with heat. When you go vertically, you get a really weak bond, because when it cures, you trim it off, quite often during application, it will fall away, and you'll end up with filling it with silicon, which looks completely different to the floor. And obviously, if it breaks down during application, you then got a big problem there. It can crack. If you've got a joint there that's open, it can allow dirt, germs, etc., to breed. The beauty of resin flooring is you've got unlimited choices with regards to coving. We can create a cove out of mortar to whatever height and radius you require, typically 100 or 150 mil as standard. There's no joints. It blends seamlessly into the hygienic wall system. There's actually no need for a capping system either if you need to for hygienic control you could also seal it with a flexible sealant however if you have a job where you've already got pvc setting skirting applied you can simply overcoat it with the resin flooring very very quickly so there's an awful lot of choice there for you perfect thanks uh, we've got a few more that have come in um i can see that we've actually got somebody that's asked two questions that I think that maybe they are linked in um, to the same question. So um, we've got one that's come in as, are there, are there resin flooring options that work for small residential situations or is it really better suited for larger, more heavy duty scenarios? In a small installation, how do costs compare to vinyl and tiles, for example? Um, and then they've also asked, can you explain exactly what the application process is? Specialised machinery needed, question mark. Okay, uh, I'll take that one, uh, Charlotte. Yeah, as you saw earlier in the comfort floor seamless resin applications and the pump uh, screeds that we've got there, 
over a uh, heated system. All of these resins uh, can be applied in small areas uh, over different substrates if the right uh, detailing and preparation and applications considered. So we would have to look at uh, more so uh, what the existing functionality is. Well, if it's new build, then it's quite easy. If you create the floor uh, with the right um, cementitious uh, resins or whatever, that can be done. In smaller areas, uh, generally speaking, the resin, the comfort floor is laid by uh, traveling applications or roller coach, depending on thicknesses we're doing. Uh, the pump the screeds, they can be done by hand as well, as you saw earlier, quite easily. Uh, or if it's a very large area, it can be actually pumped out into that. So in your particular case, in smaller applications, um, there's no need to have big machinery and equipment apart from the mixing um, um, uh, items that you may need. And generally speaking, uh, if you're an applicator, obviously, and uh, you're one of our um, sort of trained people, you would be used to that sort of machinery and equipment, and we'll guide you through all of that, the preparation, everything else. Um, if you're somebody who's um, like myself, a DIY fan sometimes, uh, have a go, and my wife never likes it, because <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't do it as good as our trade professionals. Um, you know, uh, basically, there's guidelines for all of these things, and this case is just speaking to us, uh, to be honest. Great, thanks, Mohammed. Um, so we've got a question that's come in. How do you prevent resin flowing down the built-in falls in a wet floor shower area and accumulating around the shower gully? Yeah, I can um, I can take that that one, Charlotte. Um, <clears throat> it's it's important um, in that particular application to first of all choose the right um, resin flooring system. Um, there are systems which are not not so self smoothing, um, and they can you know they can be trail or um, or roller applied as as the finish. And that that by selecting the right type of resin, you will uh, you can you can stop that from happening. And also suitable kind of formwork to to prevent uh, it, it getting into the drain and, ma and making a mess of it. Great, thanks, David. Another question. Um, so a finish over substrates other than concrete was touched on in the UFH answer. Um, any basic advice and considerations for going over timber suspended floor in a residential application? Um, I can I can take this one as take this one as well. Um, I think one uh, thing to look at, Paul. That was your your question. I can see um, is is to look at our hybrid. Um, leveling compounds, they're known as Shonox HS, uh, HS50 and HS10F. They're designed for that type of application. The key thing with those is also to select the right primer um, for, for connections. If, uh, if you've got a particular um, project, uh, we could just understand a bit more about the substrate from you, the timber substrate, and we can, we can advise accordingly. But certainly I would, I would lean you towards the uh, hybrid spree technologies from Shonox. Thanks, David. Uh, further question, um, have you done listed buildings, for example, church halls, um, and what challenges um, have you faced what, if, if we have um, worked on those projects? Uh, I'll take that one. Yep. Yeah, the challenges for listed buildings is <laughs> quite unique in that they want natural materials. So, you know, the, the, the floors, depending on what the finishes are there currently and what you're trying to achieve, uh, is always getting the natural look to match some of the existing. And without going and looking at these and, and seeing what the patterns may be or what the um, um, listed um, uh, heritage people will allow you to do, uh, it's not so easy to uh, create that. And the, the question itself says, what is the challenge? It is a challenge. But there are ways to overcome it, and with the hybrid technology I spoke about earlier, the D the SBI um, uh, Sharnox, that levels out, and you know it looks like a cementitious floor finish. But of course, you may want to put back the old tiles or the mosaics, and that can be done over the top of those. Uh, but if it's a resin application or something, that will be a little bit more difficult because the English heritage people don't tend to like those sort of things. Perfect. 
Uh, I can see that we've actually got one more question um, that's co well, a couple more actually that have come in. So maybe um, we'll do a couple more and close up um, just to let everybody know as well that following the webinar, we do um, we do have access to these questions. So we'll follow up with you um, further to the webinar as well so that we can discuss anything in, in any more detail. Uh, so the last couple of questions that we've got are, um, so what is the VOC level for resin flooring when applied, particularly in consideration of residents with breathing difficulties? Yeah, um, I'll take that one, Charlotte. That's, it's Thanks, David. Fine. Um, the the level does depend on the technology um, that you that you pick. Um, the certainly the epoxies and polyurethanes. Um, certainly the seeker products uh, uh, the vocs have been massively reduced uh, through our research and development um i think you need to consider uh, i would say certainly where you've got sensitive resident areas is, is avoiding mma materials um there's nothing harmful in those but the it has a very potent smell during the curing process and that that is something that has to be managed but um again we have we publicly have that information about uh, VOCs and, and odors, um, but uh, I, I would say you you should look look at the polyurethane and epoxy technologies for those types of areas. Great, thank you. But final one then, um, and any obviously if anyone's got any further questions, uh, please do get in touch with us following the webinar. We will be supplying the webinar as part of this follow up. Um, and all of our area technical managers here today will have your details so they can discuss your questions as well in, in more detail. So um, final question, um, how do you finish wall up stands to suit ceramic wall tiles? I think David just uh, mentioned some of the coding actually. Do you want to take that again, David? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, no problems at all. Again, as I say, you've got lots of different options. Lots, lot, but we can literally, as I say, create the coving for you to neatly join any ceramic finish, etc., with particular sealants to match as well. So, yeah, it, no, n none of these are any particular issue at all. As I say, we can literally create it for you. Great, thanks, David. Okay, well, hopefully that's answered everybody's questions. Again, we will be sending the webinar as follow up and um, we will be in touch with those that, that have asked questions. OK, um, thank you. Thank you again for joining us. Much, much appreciated. Uh, please, uh, please join us for, for our next uh, webinar on the 18th of June. Um, we have this uh, new technology that we'd like to speak to you about, which is the Shonok Frenetex 3D system. Particularly if you're working in refurbishment type projects, uh, this system certainly will be of uh, in use during is, is very unique. So uh, thank you for joining us and um, hopefully we'll see you again soon.